Good evening. Today, we're going to start with chapter nine, serial communication. Um, we're going to learn what is serial communication. We're going to cover the SCI module uh, in the SCS-12. SCI stands for serial communication interface. That is a, a type of serial communication of asynchronous, asynchronous serial communication. We're gonna learn how to configure the SCI ports and use them on the SCS-12. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try, this is my goal today, to use them with the hyperterminal and use them with MATLAB to be able to send data between the microcontroller and the laptop using different applications. And we'll see how you can make two microcontrollers communicate with each other. Um, okay, and even if you know, let me do it. Okay, so serial communication uh, versus what? Parallel communication, right? So what is serial communication? Uh, let me use my board. So when we talk about serial communication, in the past, if uh, some of you remember, we used to have parallel ports on your computer even, right? So if you, if you bring two controllers, two computers, two microcontroller units, MCUs, MCU, maybe this is HCS as well, and this is another one, or an Arduino, or whatever. In the past, and the, came, the name of parallel ports came from this. You connect a parallel port, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four pins, write eight bit, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, whatever. Immediately, you write them here, they transfer to the other microcontroller in the speed of the electron, and you read them. This kind of parallel communication that used to use the parallel ports is not efficient anymore, especially today with the very high speeds, because we're wasting resources, we're wasting pins that we most likely need to interface with other devices. So in serial communication, we want the controllers to talk to each other, we want them to talk with each other, okay? If this is an MCU, MCU, uh, this would have a transmit pin and a receive pin. And this would have also a transmit pin and a receive pin, okay? And we connect the transmit pin here from with the receive pin here and tr the transmit pin here with the receive pin here. Of course, with a common ground, right? For, to be a reference for the voltage levels. We call this a cross connection, right? Cross connection because it looks like a cross. A cross. So whatever you write here, you receive it on this pin. Whatever you, you write here, you receive it on this pin. When you want to send a byte, you go put it in a shift register. Guys, if anybody is not familiar with this and want me to slow down, please say that. Okay, you can write the byte that, that you wrote here in parallel mode once. You can write it in a shift register in a, in, in a manner like this, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, or whatever, eight bits. And, and this is some, something inside here in the trans, transmitter module. With a clock, and with, ev with every clock, you start shifting a bit out, a bit out on the pin. And another shift register here will be shifting in the same speed a bit by bit, okay? So you send the one, you receive it here. Then you send the zero, this shifts right. And then the zero goes out afterwards. You receive a zero, it comes in the most significant bit of the shift register. The one goes one step right. 
after eight shifts, the eight bytes that were here you'll, will be here. So you serially transmitted them using one physical line instead of eight physical lines. Okay. So this is serial communication in general. When we talk about serial communication, okay, we talk about synchronous serial communication and asynchronous serial communication. Synchronous in, in the in the in the synchronous serial communication, we have a shift register here. So shift register inside computer A, MCU one, and another shift register inside MCU two. And we know that the shift register has a logic to do the shift and needs a clock to do the shift, right? And the clock speed is controllable. Now, in the case of, and whatever goes out from here, from the transmit goes into this, into here, to the receive pin. And whatever goes out from here in the transmit goes back into here Maybe if you want to use, uh, you can imagine it like that to the receive. So it would look like two eight bit shift registers as if they were like 116 shift register, but half of it is in first microcontroller and the other half in the other microcontroller. But we need to make sure when we start shifting things out from here, and shifting them in here, that we need to make sure that the speed of shifting out is equal to the speed of shifting in. So there should be something that controls the clock. Either, either use the same clock source, same clock source to feed the, the two shift registers. And in this case, we call this synchronous serial communication. Why? Because, because they're synchronized, the same clock. So if this is, generates um, one kilohertz clock, then this shifts in at one kilohertz speed and this shifts out at one kilohertz speed. It's the same clock. So they're synchronized, synchronous. In the case of, in the case of having two separate clocks, Okay, two separate clocks. This has its own clock, clock one, and this has its own clock, clock two. Okay, but, but there is some kind of, of synchronization through the data you're sending. You, you, you pre-agree on a speed somehow, but you need to make sure that you start it at the same time and things like that. So uh, you can say, oh, okay, let's agree that I'm always high, but when I want to start transmitting, I go low, and let's call this a start bit. It doesn't count. Then I'm going to send eight bits. Every bit will stay on the line for this much amount of time. And then when I'm done, I'll, I'll send you a stop bit. Okay. This synchronization through start bits, stop bits, pre agreement on a, a, on a speed. Okay. But with everyone having a, a separate clock, this would be called asynchronous, asynchronous serial communication. Okay. So in chapter nine of this book, it, it covers the asynchronous serial communication. Okay. And the asynchronous serial communication module in the SCS-12 is called the SCI. SCI, Serial Communication Interface. An example of serial communication, synchronous serial communication modules are the I square C, the SPI, 
okay, modules. In, seri in synchronous AC uh, serial communication, I'm not going to cover them here. Um, these controllers that have SPIs, in, in addition of sending a transmit and receive line, transmit and receive line. So in asynchronous, in asynchronous, in asynchronous, you have a transmit, receive, and of course, ground. Same here. Transmit, receive, and ground. In Sync in synchronous and synchronous, you also have a clock. Okay, that has be has to be sent. If you're sending a clock between two different controllers, okay, in high speed, this cannot go long. Okay, the distance of transmitting a, a clock, so not to lose synchronization, cannot be long. So usually. I square C and SPI serial communication is used to, to, to communicate between a controller maybe and a type of sensor, smart sensor that sends this data serially or another microcontroller, but in distance that is not further, maybe a few centimeters, centimeters at max a meter away from it. But in asynchronous serial communication, the clock speeds are much less slower, okay? And you can go up to maybe 25 meters, 30 meters, in some cases, 100 meters, okay? So th these can be far, uh, far away. Okay, so let's start with the SCI. You're with me, right? You're, you're gonna start the weekend. Yes. Yes, what do you do? OK, so this is serial communication. SCI is a serial communication interface on the SCS-12 that is asynchronous and that uses the EIA-232 standard, which is, we know, uh, which became the, uh, or what, the RS-232 standard. What is the RS-232? Well, before starting, before starting, uh, and it is uh, usually the computer that wants to transmit something to another computer is called the, uh, 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 a data terminal equipment, DTE, that has the data, and the modem or the medium that will convert the data into something transferable that do the transfer is data communication equipment. Uh, it could be a modem, a router, a switch, and uh, uh, an interface, whatever, and the, the serial or the communication link. When communication is, is two-way communication, we call it full duplex. Half duplex is also two-way, but you cannot be doing transmission and receiving at the same time, while full duplex you can. Uh, an example of this uh, half duplex communication is the radio walkie-talkies that uh, used uh, by the police, full duplex communication, something like uh, what we're going to do. Simplex is one-way communication. Communication can be point-to-point, -point, okay, or can be multi-drop. In multi-drop, usually there is a, a master that controls the communication over the, this um, communication over these communication links. Most likely, serial communication, either the synchronous errors or asynchronous, are, are usually point to point. When we start to want to have a network or a group of, of, uh, of equipment that want to communicate, we start building if they yani, exceed a certain number, um, then you're building a network. And in embedded systems, the bus network, the most famous and common bus network that we use to, uh, to have controllers communicate with each other is the CAN network, the controller area network. Uh, the SCI, the SCI we have implemented 
or built on this microcontroller is based on the RS-232 standard. This is some history. This, uh, the RS-232 standard um, uh, specifies the standards of many circuits used in this. It started in 1960 by uh, the Electronic Industry Association, EIA, and that's why it's sometimes called EIA-232. Then uh, revised in 69, 87, uh, revisions, revisions. Okay, and the last one was in the 97. Uh, this standard specifies the electrical, functional, procedural, and mechanical specs of this communication. What am I? So electrical specs. This covers a lot of things, like the signal rate, uh, to be less than 20 kilobits per second. Uh, uh, a sure, correct transfer within 15 meters. Well, new technology support much that, uh, much more than that, much more data rates, much more uh, uh, transfer, but this was the initial. Okay, voltage levels uh, from minus 25 volts to plus 25 volts. The most important is um, that anything more negative than three volts is gonna be uh, interpreted as a uh, logic one. Anything more positive than three volts should be interpreted as logic zero. So logic zero is a positive voltage, logic one is a negative voltage. Some functional uh, uh, specs like brake signal, transmit signal, some functions that you are usually for flow control. Um, I'm not going to use them. Um, mechanical specs, if you remember the DB25 uh, connector, we, we used to have them on the old uh, computers, if you remember them. They have many pins. In addition to the transmit and rece receive, to the transmit and receive pin, you have many pins to, to, to you, that you can use for usually data flow control. The most common afterwards, once th things started becoming better, is the DB9. Uh, connector and the mechanical specs speci and you specify the, dim the dimensions of, of this connector and what is going to be pin one, what is pin two, three, and five. Usually, when we use to connect them, we usually use pins two and three and five, right? You connect two to, to three from the other side and three to, and to two to, and the other side and ground to ground, pin number five. And we used to call this, and this was before the USB. I'm pretty sure Talal maybe remember these days. Uh, yes, doctor. DB9. Yeah. Okay. Put um, a lot of soldiering for DB9 and DB25. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is for, for the mechanical specs. Now to talk about uh, the data format, the data format uh, and the synchronization in, in, in the asynchronous data communication mode is really important because the data format, the frame is the only thing you have to synchronize that, oh, you're, you know, you're speaking uh, or sending something in a pace, you need to make sure that the other side receiving your data is, uh, you know, you're not sending byte number 10 and the other side is thinking that this is byte number two. Okay, there should be a way because you don't have the same clock. You have different clock sources. And because of the uh, some time drift that can happen and accumulate over time, you need to resync every, every amount of time. So usually when you transmit data, you have your eight bytes that eight data bytes that you wanna, eight, eight data bits that you wanna send. This is your data. Right. When you want to send them, you should. So this is your data. Let me. I don't want to do this. You you want to send this byte, data byte, that you want to transmit. Okay, from bit zero, one, two, up to seven. And the, the data could be one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. So you want to send this. You don't start with sending the one. First, the specs say that the line between the microcontrollers 
or the computers or the data equipment interfaces. Uh, the transmit line, assume this wants to send this to, to here, you send it to, you first need to connect the transmit with the receive and the ground with the ground. Okay. First, this has to be always pulled to logic high, which is the ideal. Okay, the ideal state. It's always high. When you want to start transmitting, you send a start bit. You call it a start bit. You pull the logic to low. Okay, one start bit, logic zero. Then you start sending your data. What do you send first? The least significant bit, right? You send the one. Then you send the other one. Then you send the zero. Then you send the one, then the other one, then zero, then zero, then one. So this is spatial, right? So this significant bit on the right, but this is with time. This is the least significant bit. You said you sent it first. Then when you're done after the eight bit you send a one stop bit or two stop bits or one and a half, okay? So a stop bit, a stop bit pulls the date, the, the, the line back to ideal. Then continues ideal or can go back to another start bit, okay? And start transmitting. So you have one start bit, seven to eight data bits, seven or eight, an optional parity bit, Okay, an optional, it doesn't have to be parity to check for parity, even parity out parity for error detection. Uh, then stop bits, it could be a one or one and a half or two. What does do we mean by one, one bit or one and a half or two? The duration, the duration of how long this bit is going to be written on the line. Okay. So if a bit is, is, is written for one millisecond, then a half bit is half millisecond. Least significant bit is transmitted first, of course. Then the most significant bit is transmitted last. How does the SCI interface detect the arrival of a start bit? Ideally, the clock signal frequency is at least 16 times uh, the baud rate. Uh, of the baud rate or data rate to sample the, re the receive signal. Yani, if you agree, if a controller agrees to send to send data to another controller at one kilohertz, okay, one kilohertz, yeah, which means you're writing. 1,000 uh, bytes per second, right? Then the sampling, you're reading 16 times faster. The, your clock, your internal clock is 16 times faster than, so 16 kilohertz. You read at 16 kilohertz, which means, and you're writing at 16 kilohertz which means that you're writing a byte or a bit 16 times to make sure if a drift happens that you did not lose. You were still, okay, if, if, you, if I missed two steps or three steps, I'm still within the same byte, okay? So you have a clock that is 16, five times faster than the data rate. The data rate, we call it the, the baud rate. Now, we're usually at the ideal, ideal any logic high, ideal, okay? Then when a falling edge occurs, that means this is the start bit. Huh? Huh. We're at ideal, then we start start bit. If you are at a start bit and a falling edge, the circuitry here starts sampling it takes the first sample, the second sample, 16 times. Uh, six, you're 16 
times faster. And ideally, you should be able to read the bit 16 times before the other bit comes. Then the third, fifth, and seventh samples that we read, if their majority is a one, are low, then you, you, you decide that this is a star point. Okay. The majority, you check for the majority. Five. How do we determine a logic level? Same thing. A logic level of this bit or this bit or whatever, whatever bit. You're writing it for 16 samples. You're reading it 16 samples, okay? 16 times, ideally. But for any logic level other than the start bit, instead of reading, uh, yeah, instead of looking at the majority of the third, fifth, and seventh, this is for the start bit. For recognizing the level of a data bit, we look at the eighth, ninth, and tenth samples we've read. If the majority was a one, then you decide that you read a one. If the majority is a zero, then you decide that you read a zero. And again, this is all internal inside, implemented inside the SCI model. But this is for us to understand. An example, sketch the output of the letter G, letter G, ASCII code of G, when it's transmitted using the format of one start bit, eight data bit, one stop bit. Okay, letter G, the ASCII code of letter G is 67. You can, you can find that in the ASCII table, Google it or whatever. 67 is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, but in binary. So when you want to transmit this, this is how you start. You're at ideal. You want to start transmitting first. First thing you do, you pull down a start bit. This is the start bit. Then you start transferring the bits. You start from the least significant bits. So you, you send the one, then one, then one, and three ones. So one, one, one. And what determines, any, what decided this time period? Your baud rate, your data rate. Then zero, then zero. So you go down zero, then zero, then two ones, one, one then a zero. We're done with the eight bit. Now we should go, you should send a stop bit if it's one stop bit. Stop bit is a logic high, okay? Now, if I don't have anything to transmit anymore, we stay at ideal. If I have another byte to transmit, you pull back down to a start bit. This is the stop bit. You start again, you start bit, then you start transmitting same as before, eight, then stop, and so on. This is the logic waveform, okay, of the data to be transmitted. However, so a zero is low and a one is high. For the EIA 232 interface, we said zero is negative, uh, a zero is positive voltage and one is negative, right? So if you put this on a scope, on the if you bring the pin of the the actual pin connected to a scope, a digital oscilloscope, you'll see everything inverted. A zero, you see it high. Oh, sorry. A zero, you see it high. A one, you see it low. Okay, inverted. Come on. This is an introduction to what is SCI and serial communication. Now we're gonna start with the SCI system on the HCS world microcontroller. Yeah, the SCS world microcontroller has two serial communication interfaces, two, we call them SCI zero and SCI one. Well, some mem family members with SCS world may have one, but ours that we're using has SCI zero and SCI one, okay? So you can be able, your computer, your, your controller is in the middle. You, you can be communicating through SCI zero with another, uh, with a, uh, this is the SCI as well. You're talking with uh, MCU two, 
using one microcontroller and SC, uh, we're using SCI1 with another microcontroller. Okay, you can be communicating with two with using the two interfaces with two different equipment. I'll look at the diagram with you in a second, but here just some definitions that uh, a data format of one byte uh, uh, of one start bit, eight bit, or nine bit of data. So data can be eight or nine. And one stop bit. This is the data format. The collect the collection of the data bits and the start and the stop bits are called the frame. So a frame, a frame is the your data plus what you added before it and after it. Okay. Uh, we can use a parity bit, but when you use a parity bit, you need to use nine data bits, and the ninth bit will be the parity. Okay. Um, the SCI model shares port S pins. Yani, when we, it is a built in side, we have a parallel port called port S. Okay. SCI0 uses port S0 and port S1 for the receive and transmit pins. SCI1 imports, uh, uses port S2 and port S3 for the to receive and transmit. Okay. A break, a break is defined as transmission of uh, or receiving logic zero for a frame or longer. Yeah, you're sending eight bits of zeros or eight or nine, whatever, uh, uh, or longer for zeros. This is called a break. You can use it to, to control the flow if you want. Okay. There is a feature in the SCI to be used in multi-drop communication. And uh, there is something that can enable address wake up any you're connected with other three method and controllers on the same uh, uh, line and there you can we can configure a frame to be an address frame that the hardware will be able to detect and wake you up wake the controller up in case if it is intended for you uh, this is the logic diagram so the upper part here, so we have an E clock that comes from the uh, system. A baud rate generator that, that generates the baud rate. What is a baud rate we said? Baud rate is the bits per second. Okay, bits per second. So we're, if, we, uh, if, uh, if I'm sending 9,600 bits per second, we can say this is our baud rate, okay? One kilohertz, one kilohertz baud rate. Okay, any yani one thousand bits per second. Okay, the baud rate generator divided by sixteen. I just want to check this to make sure everything is okay. Where's the equation? Yeah, divided by 16 and I had division. Yeah, your 16 bit times slower transmitting or receiving. Yep, exactly. So this is how we do it. We want to transmit data. You have on your controller a transmitter part and a receiver part. And usually this is the breakdown. And here is the receiver part. And this is the transmitter part. You want to transmit something. Your programming model is that you write to this register, the data register, your 8-bit, 0110110, your byte that you want to transmit. This is copied, transferred to a shift register, okay? And there is a transmit control register that, that controls how fast you're going to shift, that adds also 
the start bit and the stop bit at the end. Okay. And control the format and start shifting bits one after another. And there is a, a logic to generate interrupts when your data register is empty to generate a, a transmission data register empty interrupt and a transmission complete interrupt when the shift register is empty. So you transmit, shift out, whatever you shift out is transmitted through the transmit pin. For the receive part, you can be receiving something on the receive pin. Okay, the clock, the same clock controls, you can wake you up if you're asleep or whatever. Anyways, you get the clock, you start shifting register. The shift register starts shifting bits one after another, one, zero, one, one, zero, okay. Then the control removes the start and stop, sends the data, the 8-bit data to the data register. And here you read it in your program. Okay, there is an interrupt logic also that would tell you that you're back to ideal and you're not receiving anything anymore. The, the, the voltage level here is at ideal. Okay, you can get an interrupt. And you also can uh, um, get interrupted if your read register uh, is, is full. You have some data already read. Okay. Bad rate generator. How do we set the bad rate generator? The speed of how fast we're going to send data. We have a register or two registers, let's call them. That is a 13 bit counter. We call it SBR. SBR. 13 bit, 8 bit in the register called SCI0 bad low and SCI0 bad high. Okay, this number, the SBR, is used in this equation to set the baud rate. Method. We want to set our microcontroller speed baud rate. Uh, example. Let's if we if we have um, a PLL clock of forty eight megahertz. And we want uh, 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 our transmitter to transmit at 9,600 bits per second. Okay, how do we do that? What is, what is the SBR value of these two registers? We apply this equation. So, our baud rate is 9,600. This is what we want. Our clock frequency, E clock frequency, is half of the PLL clock, which is 24 megahertz, right? So 24 megahertz divided, divided by 16, because we're 16 times slower, right? Uh, 16. All, all divided, yani, or times 9,600. So if we call our calculator 24 megahertz, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, divided by 16 equals divided by uh, what was the other thing? 9600, 9600, 156.25. You ignore the fractions, okay? You ignore the fractions. So it's 156. 156 equals 156. So we go right here. We go right here. 156. How do we write the 156? 156, the 13 bit one. Yani, we know that 8 bit can represent up to 255, right? So we really need to write the low one. So SCI zero baud high will be zero. And SCI zero baud low equals one, look at this, 156. 
decimal. Uh, you can transmit uh, and you convert it to hexadecimal if you want, 156. Okay, when you do this, your baud rate is at 9600. Yani 9600 bits per second. If you're uh, not good in math, you can use this table. But yani, this table is limited to the 16 megahertz E clock or 24 megahertz E clock. But, but we, we just use the 24 megahertz E clock at 9600. The number was 156. This is what we computed here. Clear, guys? Yes, the clock. Yeah. Why, are we, why did we use 9600, uh, nine not 9500? Can we compute? Can we make our controller work at 9500? Yeah, we can. We can. But there is uh, sometimes, uh, and sometimes people, there are, I don't know, de facto things. These are the common baud rates. So if you want to go use a already set or a software that already has like the hyper terminal, these are the numbers you're going to be able to find over there. So we need to align with them. Okay. Let's look at the control register, then start with the examples. Well, I'm optimistic. I'm going to try to finish you fast. I'll do the examples and... Um, and go have an early weekend. Play. SCI zero control register one. SCI zero control register one. Or for the other one, SCI one control register one. What do we have here? The most significant bit is the loop select bit. Loop select bit. This bit enables the SCS well to work in the loop mode. Disable the loop mode or enable the, mode, the loop mode. Should I explain the loop mode now or later? You know what? Let me explain it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. In the loop mode, yeah, Shabab. This is SCS12. We have a transmit pin and we have a receive pin. Huh? And inside here, we have the SCI model. We have the transmit shift register here and the, the receive shift register here, so, and the other, the block we saw. In the loop mode, the receive pin is disconnected. The receive pin is disconnected. Okay, and we can choose to internally connect the transmit pin with the receive. So you can, for testing purposes, you can transmit something and receive it. And if you want to test, you write, you want to, to write code to transmit something and receive it back. You can do either option. You can go tie these two lines together. Or if you don't want, you can just enable the loop mode and don't do physically go, don't solder them or put a jumper. It will connect, Lee, if you enable the loop mode, it will connect the transmit pin to your receive register, shift register, internally. Okay, this is case number one. Clear? For testing purposes. Case number two. Huh? Testing. Loop. Case number two, we use it for single wire communication. Any care, single wire communication. Mm. I have two micro controllers, SCS12 one and HCS12 two. Here I have a transmit pin, and here I have a transmit pin, and here I have a receive pin, and here I have a receive pin, and ground. Hmm? You can choose in normal in the normal case, you will have to transmit 
connect the transmit line with the receive line and the receive line with the transmit line. So this is the normal. Whatever you write here, you read here. Whatever you write here, you read here. So here inside, you, both of your transmit shift out register and the shift in register are working. The two logics are working. But you can choose to save to save some resources and say, oh, okay, I don't want to use two lines. I just want to use one line. One line. I don't want to use this. I don't want to use this. In this case, go enable the loop mode. طيب. This will connect the receive register, the receive shift register. It will disconnect it from the receive uh, pin and connect it to the transmit pin. Bardo transmit pin is, this is the shift out, shift out, and this is the shift in register. Both will be connected to the shift registers. And there is another bit, enable, uh, oh, enable, set the transmit pin to output or input, and you set the direction. So you can set this transmit pin to be output. In this case, you can be able to send through the transmit whenever you transmit the whatever you write here is going to go out. And you can configure it, the transmit pin to be input. So whatever is on here, you can shift in to your shift register. So you will be able to shift out data or shift in data using a single wire. But in this case, you're either transmitting or receiving, right? So this is the half duplex. If you, in the single line. If you use two lines with the two pins, that's the full duplex. You can be able, able to send and transmit at the same moment. But if you choose to use the single wire mode, you're at half duplex. طيب. To be able to do this, there are two steps. First, you need to enable the loop mode, disconnect the receive uh, pin from the shift in register. Then there is another bit somewhere else that you can use to decide the transmit pin direction to be input or output. Quite, guys. Nice. طيب. So this is the loop select bit that you know, uh, we can use. Uh, I'm not gonna concentrate on the weight freeze and the things. So what will happen to this, this the SCI module in the weight mode? Is it gonna be disabled or enabled? Okay. Um, in the receive source bit, do you want receive input in the loop mode? In the loop mode. The receiver input connected to the transmitter terminal to the transmitter internally. Or the receiver input connected externally to the transmitter. This is your choice. Option one, for testing, you can connect it internally. Option two, two you can connect it externally. And in this case, you will have to go set another bit to make to set the direction as output or input to use it in the single wire mode. And you need this in the single wire transmission mode. This is for testing. The M bit, data format, one start bit, eight data bit, and one stop bit. This is the most common. If you want nine data bit, the M bit will be one. What happens, uh, wake up, ideal, Okay, parity, you want to enable parity. If you enable parity, is it odd parity or even parity? So these are the things we have here. Um, and when we go set our microcontroller, this control register 
we don't want loop. We don't, we don't want to work with weight. And we want to do eight bits data with one stop and no parity and nothing. So we can, we can. So if we want to check our registers, SCI zero, bad high is zero, bad low is 156. Then this will be SCI zero control register one can be zero, 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 zero. So bar goes zero, control register one. Okay. And then initialization. And control register two. Now we have for in the transmission, we have two types of enable uh, of interrupts, and in the rece in receiving, we also have an interrupt to tell us that our receiver is full and you, it's time to go read the data. In the transmission, if I remind you, where is here? Let me clear a little here. Ah, uh, in transmission, when you want to transmit, there is an interrupt that tells you that your data register is empty, and this is called transmit data register empty, interrupt. And there is another interrupt that can tell you that your transmission is complete. Yani this is empty and this is empty, both are empty. So this interrupt will happen when both the shift register and the data register are empty. The uh, data register empty is uh, interrupt happens when only the data interrupt is empty. The data register. Why would you want to know that this is empty while this is not empty? To be able to write another byte. So and you, you write your byte, then it's transferred to the shift register, start shifting. Now, if this is empty, while this is shifting, you can write another byte, okay? So you may, you may want a, a, an interrupt to know that, or you can pull the flag, keep checking the flag. When both are empty, all the transmission is empty, you get another interrupt if you want but you have to enable it, okay? So these are the, this is the transmit uh, data register empty, interrupt, disable, or enable. Then the transmission complete, interrupt, disable, or enable. So we're not gonna use interrupts in our cases. For the receive, until you want to know that your data register is full because it's ready I mean, for your program to go read it from the data register, the data you received the data. It's ready to be used in your program. You need to be notified, okay? Uh, you can e choose to enable an interrupt to tell you, to take you to an interrupt service routine when data is ready to, do, to read it over there in the interrupt service routine. Again, we're gonna use pulling. I'm not gonna use interrupts here. You can also get an interrupt when a uh, line is idle. This bit is important. This would enable the transmitter, enable or disable the transmitter. So when we initialize, this has to be a one transmit. Or also the receiver. We want to do two-way communication. We also, we want to enable the receiver. What happens when receiver wake up mode, plus normal mode, we don't want to wake up, no break bit. So this will be zeros. So this register, the SCI zero control register two will be zero C, zero C. Anything else? I think that's it for setting the initializations. Okay, the status register, the status register, here you will have the flag that tell you, ah, you're done with transmission. The, and if you enable the interrupts, these are the flags you will need to clear inside the interrupt service routine, okay? Or if you're not using interrupts, these are the flags you check in the status register, status register one. So, Transmit data register empty has a flag. We know every interrupt has a flag and enable, right? Interrupt enable and a flag. So if you don't want to enable the interrupt, you and to know that your data register is empty, you go check this bit. While it's zero, 
your transmit check register is not empty yet. يعني you cannot write, you cannot transmit. طيب. When it becomes a one, it's empty and you can start transmitting. The data register is empty, but the shift register is not empty. The TC transmission complete flag is here. This indicates that both the data register and the shift register are empty. So maybe this would do it, or this. Okay, something we would need to be checking uh, to check if the transmit is done. And for the receive, to be able to know, receive data register full flag, uh, to be able to do, to know that the, uh, that you have received some data, then the data register is full. Then this bit has to be one before I read my data, before I read this register. So this is something we need to check for. And this is something we need to check for. We check for this, check this before transmitting. And we check for this before reading. Ashi. So when we want to check for this, we're going to end everything with zeros except this one. So, so yani, we end the SCI zero, the register, with zero, zero, one, zero, everything else zeros, yani zero x, two, zero. Mm -hmm. And we, before we transmit, we also want to mask everything except this bit. Uh, we add the register with 0x, 1, and everything is 0, so you need 0. So, before transmitting. OK, uh, ideal detect flag, overrun. Overrun, if you're writing data in a pace, you're receiving something that you did not read yet, and you receive new data, overrun overrun it, over, over, wrote over it. You, you can get the flag, noise flag. If something is noisy, I mean, the frame is not right. The framing error is not right. Uh, parity flag error, if the parity checked, the parity bit transmitted when you, re you receive, the logic will detect the parity and the if the two parties don't match, then you have a parity problem, okay. So probably what we need here is to, these two bits to check for when we write our code. Yeah, and what is this? SCI status register two. Okay, this defines the, the break uh, character length if we want to use it. Ah, and remember when I talked about the, trans, the, the single wire mode? To decide that the transmit pin is either Output or input, this is it, okay? Zero for this bit will uh, make the transmit bit uh, pin, sorry, as input. Yani it will be inter connected to the receiver register. And you can be receiving data through the transmit pin, okay? Or if you want to set, uh, send, you make it a one. Mash. RAF is set when the receiver detects a logic zero during RT1 time period. Okay, I don't care about this. So maybe we don't need to use this register. Character transmission. Okay, now when we want, when we want to transmit a character, yani a character is a byte yani, at the end of the day, right? We, when you want to transmit a, a character or byte, you go write it in the data register. Low, there is a data register, SCI zero data register low, if it's 8-bit, that's it. That's all that you want. But if you're using 9-bit, okay, then you would probably use the, the, the high. Mashi. So these are the data registers that we want to write to when we are shifting out or read from when we are shifting in. Tayyip. And we talked about these. 
we need to wait for the transmit empty uh, data register empty flag to raise before able to shift another thing out. And we need to wait for uh, for the read for the read uh, flag we just saw over here. Uh, this one the data uh, receive these two. We're talking about these read and transmit before reading we need to check for this one before transmitting we need to check for this one this is what it's saying on this slide uh, and this is how it works and this is internal logic so this is your data register you write your byte here this is called SCID uh, SCI zero data register low uh, for 8 bit um, we write to it then the hardware will take over it will take it to the shift register add the start bit and the stop bit the parity bit if needed this is controlled by the m bit how many bits eight nine whatever and start shifting out in the speed baud rate that we computed using the sbr registers and you can get interrupts on the things you want. For character reception, same thing. Uh, you need to check the, that bit we just pointed to, okay? That your uh, read data register is ready before even being able to read it. You will be receiving on the this line a bit after a bit, shifting in. Then when you're done, the logic will take the eight data bits, send it there. You get the read bit high, flag high. You go read this byte. And this is the logic for the interrupts, the loop as well. Single wire mode, I, I explained it. In the single wire mode, you disconnect the receive pin and connect Internally, yani internally, either decide to take internally the transmit and receive, connect them together, so you can start sending to yourself, or externally to use it in the single wire mode. And you can decide the direction as output or input. Flow control, yani you can sometimes, if uh, in in some cases, to tell the controller stop sending, stop receiving, we're not do, we're not gonna do so good. Flow control. Let's go do some examples. Let's go do some examples. And I pre-wrote uh, some class demos here. I'm gonna do you two demos. I wrote them already. We look at any. Can go over them with you guys. In the first demo, both are in C. So class demo 11, class demo 11. Any questions so far? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay. So لو قلت لها في كويز كان خلاص يعني واضح نكون عسانين let's try to move as fast and I can start from scratch بس let me go get this code I pre-wrote control V so what is this code gonna do let's go in this in this in this program this class demo we're gonna communicate make the microcontroller First, send this message. Welcome to the embedded system design class at PSUT spring 2021. Then some stars before it and after it. Okay. This is a message I defined, a pointer to a message, a string that ends with a, a carriage return and new line and a dot, 
I want to use the dot to, to know that I'm done with the string or not. And I have my seven segment uh, display array. And here, uh, I don't need this. I copied from the last time. طيب. What do you want to do? I, we want to develop three functions. And yani PLL and delay, we know these two functions. Here in this code, what's new? We're going to develop three functions. First function to initialize the SCI0 to operate in the receive mode and transmit mode and uh, uh, using the 900, 9,600 baud rate. Then I want to write a function to transmit that I pass it a character, any yani inside character and 8-bit. I give it 8-bit, it sends it out. And another function, receive, SCI0 receive, where it reads a byte and gives it back to your program. And sign character, any yani 8-bit. Tamam, this is what we want to develop. This is the core of what we were talking about. We'll come back to these things. The main program, I defined some messages that I want to send out and some unsigned character I for a counter and my receive character when I receive it uh, from this function, I want to store it here maybe. Port H output, port P output. This, this one has the red, green, blue LEDs uh, connected to it. This is the seven sigma display connected to it. I'll come back to these things. Let's go to the functions. PLL, the PLL, we already wrote it together. So the my delay, we already wrote it together. You can replace it with the one that is real-time interrupt based. These are the three functions. And these are the SCI. So I want to define a function called SCI0 in it. Initialize the SCI0. Baud rate 156. We did the math and computed this together. Low is uh, 156, high is zero. This is at two, 24 megahertz. Control register one is zero. No loop, eight data bits, no parity. And the control register two, zero C. Remember these? We just computed them, huh? We did. Zero C. Here the C are the ones that, the one to enable transmit and the other one to enable receive. Everything else is zeros. So here, we enable the transmitter and receiver at 9600 bits per second, eight data bits. طيب. When I want to transmit a byte, I want to pass it to the function. And while, uh, I remember I, I want to keep checking for, for what? For the transmit data register empty bit until it's empty. So while this is zero, I want to stay stuck. When it becomes a one, Manato, the transmit data register is empty. I'm ready to transmit, right? So I want to and mask all other bits. SCI zero, state of register one, ended with zero X eight zero, yani one zero 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 zero. While this is zero, that's why I added the not here. Stay stuck here. When it becomes a one, Manato, the date, transmit data register is empty. Manato, I'm ready to write to it a new byte to transmit it. When it's empty, it moves to the, the condition is not true anymore. We move here and we write to the SCI zero data register low a byte, my byte that I passed through the function here. Okay. This is the transmit function. For the receive function, SCI zero, SCI zero receive. I'm not passing anything to the function, but I want to return uh, eight bit that I read. When do I read? When the data register receive data register is full, then I receive the byte. So I check for this bit, uh, this one. When this becomes a one, I keep waiting this until it becomes a one. While it's zero, I stay stuck. When it's one, I have a byte that I can return. So, and it with 0x20, okay? While it is still zero, Manato, we're not, we didn't receive a byte in the data, in the read register, stay stuck. When we receive a byte, the, the flag raises, the condition is not true anymore. We go and return the data register low value, the 8 bit. Are these clear, guys? Yes, the clear. Okay. 
دكتور اذا راح نعمل سندو ريسيف على نفس البورد يس 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 على نفس البورد بس راح نعمل راح نعمل ساكت راح نعمل كونكشن ام جونا ميك ات كومينيكيت وذ ذا لابتوب اوكي بس اف اي تو هاف تو two boards if i have two boards i can put one here and one here and maybe add another in my main loop if push push button one is connected then you work in the transmission mode if push button two is is pressed you work in the receiver mode مثلا. whatever but we're going to make it work in the two modes and communicate with the laptop for now طيب. um If you guys enabled the interrupts, we know now the interrupt vector. You can go right, void interrupt handler number and get the interrupt for transmit complete or receive the A. Uh. Instead of writing these inside a function while you're waiting for a status bit, you can go do it in the interrupt service routine. We're familiar with this now. Same here for the read, okay? But you clear these flags before you leave the interrupt service routine. طيب. So this is this is the basic. Now back to the application. This is what we learned today. Let's back to the application. In the my application, I want to introduce any. Uh, do you know the hyperterminal? Anybody didn't use the hyperterminal before? Uh, yes, doctor. The booty. Ah, yeah. It's a dummy terminal that is zero intelligence just receives characters and displays them. Okay. I want. I'll show it to you now in a in a second. I want to. Run the hyper terminal on my laptop. Send to it this message using the trans. When me, who's gonna send this message? The microcontroller. Okay, display it on the screen of my laptop. طيب. Do we need this? Maybe yeah. Send it. To send it, let's initialize the PLL. PLL initialize SCI zero. يعني enable and receive and transmit. Enable all interrupts if we want. It's a part of the thing. Then I want to send the message to. Message to is these stars. Yeah, I want to send stars, then the text, then the stars again. So I want to send message to. Initialize i at zero. While message to of i, any of zero, doesn't equal the dot at the end of the message here. Uh, doesn't equal the dot, the period here. Keep sending and keep incrementing i. While not. SCI zero transmit the message to that I is pointing at, and it's the first star, then the second star, then the third star, and in this case, I'm sending this. This is a string, and here I'm not sending a star because this is part of a string. I'm passing the ASCII code of it, actually the ASCII code of a star. Okay, and the dot I use these codes here because I'm checking the ASCII code of the dot. The doctor, in the message size. String كامل. Yeah. أبي هم ولا بتعامل معه أنا byte byte. Yeah, I'm I'm dealing with it byte byte. شايف أنا قاعد I'm I'm sending one byte at at a time. Then when I'm done with the first byte, I increment i to point to the second byte. يعني each star here is a byte. Byte another byte another byte. Ah, the w is a byte, the e is a byte, the l is a byte, and so on. أنا بتعامل معهم byte byte. Okay. So Keep incrementing i until i is uh, is the dot. Write it. Uh, you you exit. You exit here. So here, this loop wrote the stars for the first time. Then I uh, 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 made uh, the i zero again and started sending message one. Message one is the welcome. Okay, welcome. Byte byte. Uh, keep incrementing i until I reach the last thing, the dot. Then send the stars again if you want. Then in the infinite loop, you do this once. Then in the, in the infinite loop, what do I want to need? I want to read a byte on the receive pin. In this case, I told you I'm going to use the hyper terminal. Yani I'm going to use my finger to push a number on the laptop keyboard. Okay, send it to the SCS12. The SCS12 will receive it here and save it in my received character. Display whatever I receive in my receive character. When I when I push something on my keyboard, it's gonna send the ASCII code of it. And when I send the one, it's gonna send 31. You're familiar with ASCII code, صح? When I press a four, it's gonna send 34. 
So to bring it back to a number, I'm going to subtract 30 hex from it. Leish, Ashan Sir 4. Then I display it on my seven sigma display. So when I send a four, I push a four on my laptop, you're going to see a four on my seven sigma display. And this tilde is to invert uh, the, for the common uh, anode thing, okay? To invert all the bits. So I received the byte, I displayed it on my seven sigma display. Then I transmitted it back to the hyper, ter hyper terminal as is plus one. Yani if I push a one, I'm going to receive back what? On the hyper terminal, a two. I'm going to push a one, but see a two. طيب. Then carriage return a new line. Yani yani and that's it. This is my simple program. And uh, I'm going to. Uh, program my microcontroller. Build, no errors. Program. Com three. Doctor, بس في مجال سؤال بس جوز السؤال يكون غبي. لا ما في شيء غبي. هسا لما بدي اشبك تو كنترولر اه اشبك الاثنتين مع بعض صح؟ اه هسا الجهاز بده يشوف واحدة منهم مش الاثنتين صح؟ هسا بدي افرجيك يا يزيد جيف مي ون سكند خليني اعمل ديمو عشان تفهم لي شو القصة اللي سويناها هسا وهسا بفرجيك اللي سؤالك كيف اخلي تو كنترولرز يحكوا مع بعض هسا انا ما مش تو كنترولرز راح يحكوا مع بعض ون كنترولر مع ون بي سي مع ون لابتوب طيب آه. بعدين بيجي تو كنترولرز تمام Okay. طيب, I just programmed this on my micro my microcontroller. I have to close this because I'm gonna use my serial link to communicate with the dummy terminal. طيب. So I program it. Now my microcontroller has this code in it. طيب. What is the hyper terminal, ya shabab? The hyper terminal is something here. I'm gonna share with, with you guys. Yani, if you go read about hyper terminal. Did you uh, did you ever use Windows XP? Did you remember those days when Windows XP was there? Yes, Victor. Uh, Windows XP, part of it in, in, in its accessories, it had something called Hyper Terminal and it was free with it. And then up to my knowledge, now this Windows 10 or Windows 8 or 7 or Vista doesn't have, doesn't have Hyper Terminal. You have to buy it with money. I don't know why I was using it at that time and I decided to go copy it. And I still have the free one. So I'll, I'll, I can share it with you. And you can find many hyper terminals uh, uh, online. Trial, you can pay after a trial period, but this is the one that it was used to come with the XP, Windows XP. I think you will, you will need to copy the, this DLL file to the system 32 folder in, under your Windows. And this is the executable. So uh, I'm going to run it. And for those who are uh, any kind of new gener generation, in the past, guys, uh, before starting any having computer networks, you, people used to have a central frame uh, server, let's say, and with serial links connected to screens only screens that have text they don't have any operating system they're dummy terminals dummy just receive text and, and, and transmit text machine now when computers started coming pcs people still had those systems that they needed to communicate with serially so they had this hyper terminal uh, interface it's really dummy any just give it a name whatever ggg okay and here you decide what COM port it's connected to. I have COM3 on my controller, okay. Then you set the baud rate. And here again, this is the reason why I picked 9600 and not 500, because these are the kind of de facto numbers, 9600. We choose eight data bits, not nine, right? No parity, one stop bit. And we did not have flow control, none flow control, okay? Apply. Okay, now, now this hyper terminal is connected 
to come three serial port on my laptop طيب طيب ماشي يا شباب and here طيب my microcontroller let me get, take away this do I need this okay keep it I'll keep it طيب and here my microcontroller let me bring it closer a little طيب you're not gonna see my other camera بس يعني I'm gonna reset my microcontroller I didn't run the code yet uh, I'm gonna push reset uh. what happened the SES 12 connected serially with the with the laptop through the USB uh, يعني through the USB, the USB لأنه no فيه interface بين the USB and the serial code, the serial port, SCI0. Okay? In the past, into, do you see me, my camera, or like, any, طيب, طيب. طيب, let me stop sharing for a second, I'll come back. I'll come back to sharing, stop sharing, so I can... مفهوم الدكتور يعني اعتبرت انت ال HCSS12 اللي هو transmitter Yes. الكمبيوتر مع الهايبر تيرمينال هو الريسيفر. يس جريت. وصلين يو اس بي كابل. يس. اندرستود فور ايفري بادي؟ يس دكتور واضحه. يس دكتور واضحه. اوكي. طيب جريت خلاص ماشي. طيب ناو ايم جونا بوش اون ماي لابتوب تراست مي ماي فينجر از جونا بوش نمبر 1 طيب بس ما هو انتم لازم تشوفوا. طيب نمبر 1 اه ايم جونا بوش نمبر 1 خلاص ثقه دكتور يس. What do you see? You see two. Two. Leish. One plus one. Because I sent a one to the microcontroller, it added the one and returned it back. So you receive a two. So I'm gonna press a five. What do you see? Six. A six. So because we added the one. يعني this terminal is dummy is not يعني I'm not typing on it what you see on it is coming from the microcontroller طيب on the same uh, um, let me turn my other camera where is it where is my other camera to where's my other camera huh am I am not am I connected Where's my other camera? Do you see it, yeah, Shabab? Okay, I'm not sure if you have one bus. I am not sure if you have one bus. I'm 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 not sure if you have one bus. طيب جوين والله حتى نجي ميتنج نمبر ام شار اور وير از ات انا لا مي تشيك ات اوكي ميبي كنت شابك وات شو اللي كنت شابك عليه 2097 والله كنت شابك اه اوكي ويرد هلا بينت اه هلا بينت سو ليت مي بينت وين راحت هي اه اوكي ليت مي بينت طيب سو ذيس از ماي مايكرو كنترولر اه سو هير سي ام غونا بوش اوكي ويز ذي هايبر تيرمينال ذيس از هايبر تيرمينال اه ذيس از هايبر تيرمينال ام غونا بوش See my finger, uh, number seven. Ah, uh, seven. You can pin it, you can pin it, you can pin it, you pin or spotlight. you can do that for you, Allah. I can, I can do that for you. Spotlight or something. Uh, Remove pin spotlight. How do I do it? Remove pin again. 
قصدك لو سويته من عندي تمام آه شفتها ناو آه تمام صح اوكي سبوت لايت ام ناو هيرز ذا تيرمينال اه ام ام غونا ام غونا بوش نمبر 4 4 اند هير يو ار غونا سي 5 هير اون ذا لابتوب يو سو 4 صح اون ذا اون ذا شو اسمه هذا اون ذا مايكرو كنترولر طيب So uh, I push eight. You're gonna see eight, but the, the eight is subtracted from it thirty hex, right? To be able to see it here, nine, one, two. So here we you see it right, three, four. But here you say you see a one added to it, right? Type. What happens if I press an A? A. You see a B here. Same concept, sir. You add, I'm sending an ASCII code. So you're adding one to it. Uh, press S, T. طيب. While on the seven segment display, you see garbage, sir, because the, our seven segment map only is maps from zero to nine. Right. Now I'm back to the numbers. Are we good here, Shabab? Yes, doctor. If I reset, everything starts over again. Okay. Okay, and here, if you see my LEDs, I'm sending up. Uh, uh, you you see that the receive button turning on. These are the receive, transmit LEDs. Okay. طيب. Yazid, if I have two microcontrollers that I want to do communication with, Yazid. See the way I have this controller connected to my laptop is through this USB. Ah. Uh, Connected to this uh, notepad. See this controller? This is the same as CS12. It used to be on a different board. In the past, we didn't ha have USB. Huh? Tell us, this is it. This is SCI0. Do you see SCI0? There you are, SCI0. Yes, yes. You see it here. Huh? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah. So then they, يعني in the past, really it was like that. حتى كانوا يستخدموا RJ, RJ connector. Then they started making this USB interface to convert to USB. Now in the new version, it's built on the board, the USB. But really, you're using uh, port as zero, port as one pins. تمام يا يزيد. So the USB is converting to USB to interface with my, with my laptop. Now, if I want these two controllers to talk with each other, I have to go bring a wire, a wire, connect it, PS port S1 with port S0 uh, here, and port S1 here with port S0 here, and ground from here with ground from here. وخلص. وخلص. Yeah, but exactly. That's it, Yazid. You just you just take three wires from the between the controllers. Transmit to receive, receive to transmit, ground to ground. Port S0, port S1 and ground. That's it. One in a second. Can I do it with the Arduino? Of course. Bardo Arduino and transmit, receive, and ground. You can take transmit to receive, receive to transmit, and ground to ground. But the logic has to be the same. Yani sometimes, if you, any of you is familiar, we used to use something called TTL to, to shift the, the voltage levels to be common. When we used to use the USB, Michel USB, when we used to use the COM, DB9. Uh, now, for the Arduino, the SCS12, the voltage levels are the same. Yani, uh, They can understand each other. You can make your controllers talk with each other. Oh, jib USB to USB, you know. Um, uh, so you can directly connect the, them. Mustafa, let me go back to my laptop in a second. The code 
of course yani if i were you how would you think yani how would you think to do it um let me see this stop here let's uh, remove hot spot okay i'm back here ah you see me now huh? okay yes, sir. Ah, so how would you do it uh, mustafa uh, if you want to prog program two microcontrollers to talk with each other if i were you yani this is a very simple one so if you want them both to to be able to transmit and receive ممكن تقول له ممكن in your main program where is my main program هون مثلا in the main loop صح so, say يعني بقول له if the first microcontroller اذا كبست فيها switch 1 اشتغل as a receiver واذا كبست فيها switch 2 push button 2 اشتغل as a transmitter صح ونزل نفس البروجرام بتصير هناك يو بريس اس 1 وت ويل ستارت ترانسميتنج اون ذا اذر وان يو بريس اس 2 يو ستارت ريسيفينج اف يو وانت دو ذا سيم كود اف يو دونت وانت يو كان رايت تو سيبريت كودز فور ايتش ون اوف ذيم ماي كلير يعني هو يعني هو صح يعني اذا بدي وان مايكرو كنترول تو ورك از ا ريسيفر بس بس بستقبل تمام واز ذا لابتوب ما ادري الماوس ها اي كان سي هير هون ممكن اجي اي كان رايت سمثينج اف يعني يو كان يو هاف تو رايت ذا راجف صح اللي هو بورت اس اللي هو بوش وتن بورت ام بورت ام بن 6 بن 7 اه بورت ام اندد ويز صح بن يعني يو نيد تو ريد ات اندد اندد ويز 0 اكس بن 6 يعني ايش 0 0 0 0 0 6 ولا 5 لاست تو بيتس اللي هم 4 و 8 يعني يو نيد تو اند ات ويز لاست يو نيد تو اند ات ويز 40 هكس اند 80 هكس طيب يا يو اند ات اف ترو صح اف ترو معناته اتس ا بول اب ريزيستر معناته اتس نوت بوش سو يو سي ا نوت هير صح اف اس 1 از بوش دو ذيس صح else do this or if s2 is pushed do the other one yani it's your responsibility now to write your, the code uh, uh, mustafa yani yani asbahat software okay is it the same code two separate codes up to you tamam doctor tamam طيب let's do another example so i'm done with this one let's do another demo with matlab Remember the last time when we did the A to D and we wrote, we read, and I did this offline, we read the voltage on the potentiometer and we displayed it on, uh, we made a voltmeter, so I displayed the voltage on the seven sigma display and we saw it on the uh, oscilloscope. Now I want to send it to MATLAB serially and display it on the scope in MATLAB. I need something easy. Let's, uh, let's do it. Here I, I have to disconnect. So because, because I'm, yani, on, I'm reserving the serial link, I cannot keep it reserved. طيب, let's start a new uh, program. Here now we're going to write two programs, one in MATLAB and one on the SCS world. And this would be class demo 12. طيب the code I have for you here and it's way modified than the other one. So same transmitter receive code and initialization, same thing that, that we just did in the previous example. A to D read the, uh, and in it we did in the last demo. Yeah, in the in, in yesterday. The, the ones that we did yesterday that read the analog port. طيب. It's only the application. يعني, and these are the initializations, the welcome and whatever. So initialize the PLL, initialize the A to D, initialize the serial port. Then in my main loop, this is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to read the potentiometer voltage, the voltage on pin on channel seven of ATD zero. I'm going to read it, call it my reading, convert it to voltage from zero to five, display it on the seven segment display. This is the first thing. Then I'm going to transmit it serially, serially to somewhere, wherever, but on the receiver I'm going to do is in MATLAB, Mashi. طيب, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna be sending here a number, what, what is my reading gonna be? It's gonna be a number from 0 to 255, صح? My reading is gonna be a number from 0 to 255. Sure, I can what the, uh, you know what? Yeah, 0 to 255 makes sense. Over there, we can convert it to millivolts or whatever. So this is our program here. Yeah, nothing new, huh? Let me build it. Program it. It's on my controller. Now I can close this. I now let me go run MATLAB. We're almost done, guys. Uh, I didn't expect this fast. Maybe we should start with uh, timers. Hi, right, this is MATLAB. Uh, what should I do? Let me go to the, our to save it for you with the demos. So let me go, let me go to class demo. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, let me do, what am I doing? Uh, should I store it in the same place and create a folder called MATLAB? with class demo 12? Maybe. That's true. Yeah, let me do this. Any project one for the C code and create a folder here. Call it uh, MATLAB. Let's store it here. طيب. Here, I'm going to create a Simulink folder, a Simulink file, Simulink. Uh, easier. In the past, we used to write code, but يعني, now uh, Simulink is much more advanced. Yeah, we can just drop blocks. So create a blank model. Okay, this is a blank Simulink model. And this is the library. Let's go, and you pick something to set the serial port. So go here, write serial in the search if you don't want, you don't know where it is. This is in the communication uh, toolbox probably. So search for serial. Type. The serial, so these are the serial supported things for packages I have for here installed. And then for Arduino, these are for the Arduino. Huh? If you want to use serial with Arduino, these are the blocks for Arduino. Serial transmit, serial receive, okay. Uh, I want to use it for the laptop. For the laptop, it is instrument control toolbox three, this one. So I want to receive only, صح? receive. But I also want to configure. So add the serial configuration to the block and add the serial receive to the block. I'm, I'm not going to send to the laptop. 
to the controller. I'm going to receive from the controller. So this is what we have, configure and receive. And whatever I want to receive, I want to display it على maybe, I don't know, a display here, a scope. A scope, come on, yes. Yeah. A scope. With scope, let me do two inputs. So I have to display the data 255. So the configuration here, let's do the number of input ports to apply. Um, access scaling uh, auto. Um, time auto wrap, scroll, scroll. Uh, display okay, why limit? Apply okay, so here the scope. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna display the uh, let's set the serial link the serial 9600 com3 eight data bits, no parity. Stop it, little Indian. Time out 10. If you don't receive anything, time out. Okay. So this is the configuration for COM3. I want to take a number from 0 to 255. Connect it here. Let's see a number. And also take it as is here. And also let's let's convert it to millivolts. Huh? Well, uh, to millivolts. Millivolts, yeah. Let's go get some... Uh, uh, a multiplier again here, again here. Uh, uh, let's take this. It's a number from zero to 255. Let's multiply it by 5,000 divided by 255. Yeah, I two millivolts. And make this run forever, infinity. Let's, I'm gonna reset the, my microcontroller to start transmitting. Uh -huh. Now I'm gonna run here. This is running. Serial receive, Asha, will gain few muskilia. With the valid board, Victoria, will come to. Invalid port. I please select a valid port. Akhirshi. Com three. Well, let me let me. Sir, برضو ال ال عندي no port selected. أنت مش مختار. Ah here. Ah okay. I didn't. I didn't. Just. Ah okay. I'm sorry. Com three. Header Terminator 118. Okay, okay, let's see if this works. Yes, I'm receiving. Ah, Shuf, I'm gonna start changing my potentiometer value. Fish way delay display, can you? Let me go stop. This is. This is the th yeah, we were receiving, huh? Let me fit them in the window here. There is something wrong. What's wrong? 89. Come three. Uh, okay. Let me go to the modeling. Set the solver to digital. Fix step. And fix step. Point one, maybe. 
fly, okay. Changing up is uh, it is receiving something here. It's, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I have a, is always zero because this is it. I'm worried about. Anything wrong here? Uh, nine six hundred eight bit non stop bit one little in the end no flow control. Toy, I'm transmitting. Um, let me go get my gain again. times uh, 5,000 over 255. So if let me play with the potentiometer. I'm at zero now, increasing, increasing, increasing. The voltage on my seven segment display is changing but I don't see it here. Let me do a fit. Huh. What's wrong? I mean, Magul, we took the wrong uh, serial ports, so wrong serial uh, coder. Um, well, I, I, I did, and he tested before. SCI setup, common, is it this one? No, it's instrument control. Did we take these ones? How did we take this one? How did we I tested this. And I need to prove that. I already shoof with rear. The same thing is not updating. I have to stop. Stop. Maybe Ishiona. Let me close this one. Shave with rear. Let me take. Here, what's going on here? Okay, I don't know what's wrong. That's you know what I was testing the other day. Let, let me just let me close this. Let me close this. No, I don't want to save. And I was testing here and the I was testing uh, here's MATLAB. Let me open this one. Okay. Let me copy it, actually. Copy it. Copy it. Go place it here in our demo. 12. Let me come here and open it. Same thing, Annie. I did the same thing. 
Are these the ones? Come three. Wallahi. The same, huh? And here's the. Let me run it. See, the data is right, 82. So I'm going to start turning my potentiometer. Paused, where is paused? In, I'm going to pause. Run. Okay. Now I'm at zero. Starting to increase. I don't know what's life is. You have a little going on. I'm increasing. So it's not MATLAB. Yani, this was working with me. Yesterday, okay. oh, maybe you're wrapping other. Maybe the setting here, what is going on? Auto, maybe manual to you. Receiving any. دكتور احنا وانا عاملين ديسبلاي لاول 10 ثواني بس اه والله مش اوتو اوكي طيب كود ذا بي ذا بروبلم يعني ان شاء الله اوتو سكرول طيب راب نرجع لراب باتم سليب هاي اللوجينج انا شايل الليمت تو لوج ليمت واي ليمت او تو اي اوكي ايش اني ثينك تشينجينج في نويز ها اه في نويز طيب um, it is transmitting I mean, zero to ninety nine يعني it could be it should be zero to two fifty five there is something wrong there is something wrong uh, دكتور كنا ال y limitation أنت عامله limitation من اثنين وتسعين شفت أو إيش زي هيك صعب شايفت هاي رجعت بس هو هاي شايف it is it is working بس maybe in live يعني كان too fast for it طيب you know what let me run it let me run it it's running now okay now I'm أنا at five volts I'm gonna go down now zero zero start increasing one two three four five now at the max, I'm going to go down to two, then go up again to five, then go back to zero. Okay, stop. Display. Surely, sir. Rahin, any limit? You saw them, sir. <laughs> something, some settings here. Time, auto span, wrap, scroll, scroll, type, metric seconds, type seconds, apply. Let's go to seconds. Type X zero. طيب ستاب مش شايف والله يا شباب I don't know what's going on I 
دكتور ما كل الكود من ال اتش سي اس 12 بيعمل ترانزميشن لمره واحده ما في انفنت لوب فيه طيب طب ياخذ الانشال فاليو بس ثينك سو لا مي جاست بوز ذا ريكوردينج فور ا سكند سو ذا ريكوردينج دازنت جيت لونج اند جو تشيك ذات بوز ريكوردينج طيب اوكي وير باك لوكس لايك ذا بروبلم از ان ماث لاب Uh, but we saw the idea. We were able to, when we reset to receive the data in MATLAB. Thank you very much and see you Monday.